This is the end, my friends. We took GTS culture from the 11th tier of English football to the National League and then quit. Let's see how they got on without me. Greetings, my excellent friends, and welcome back to part 35, the final episode of The Culture Club. I'm Kirk Sheridan, and we are here today to find out how the beloved GTS culture, the club that I established six long years ago, well, 11, if you count the five that we've just seen forward, have fared in my absence. We began in Southern Combination League Division 2, rose with that final promotion to the National League, and it looks like that was as good as it got. We've been a mid-table National League South team ever since. We got relegated from the National League in 21st place, goal difference of minus 34, no longer reached the heights that we've seen in the past. We conceded more goals in every single season than we have before, and we've scored fewer goals in every season than we'd ever scored before. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. Turns out that a manager can make the difference. I resigned after five years, 293 days, six league wins, five cup wins, and my replacement, Robert Ferry, lasted one year, 153 days. So the club probably looks like they were expected to get relegated straight away from the National League because he stayed in the job. But uh, unfortunately, didn't last beyond that. He's no longer even clickable. So who knows where he'd come from, what he'd done. Not a clue. Neil Brennan was imposed as a caretaker for seven days and then Grant Townsend took over. GTS looks like his only managerial job. Yeah, hired as GTS culture manager in 2028, sacked in 2030, and nothing since. Neil Brennan again, caretaker. And Neville Hurley Eels is still in post. Third full time manager, very determined. His managerial stats look like this could be a guy to put faith in. What's his background? Only the one managerial job came out of nowhere to become GTS culture manager. So here is the club's senior squad, a squad that finished 11th in the National League South and is completely unrecognisable from the one that we left. Let's see who is still there. Dwayne Finch, still there, playing as a right-sided central defender in a back four, by the look of things. Hinshelwood, Beggs and Olafiniana are all still there. Now that is good to see. What about the staff? Has anybody remained from the old days? Yes, Dean Randall is still there as our under-23s manager, and he joined us in 2022. He must have been one of my first staff signings. Well, at least he's there continuing the DNA. Kayon Edwards was sold for £23,000 in my final season, and we didn't sell another player for a fee until Osman Foyo, Osman Foyo, here he is. He is in the best 11 of all time for GTS culture, along with a lot of players that I do recognise. Ormson, amazingly, still in goal. I wonder what happened to Graxic. He was amazing. Watson, playing on the right of a four. Interesting. With Finch into the team as a legend. Hoyle there, brilliant. Olafiniana in the defence. Beggs and Healy in the centre of midfield. Addy on the right wing. Mullings up front. And L Dunford, Lucas Dunford. So there are two players there whose names I do not recognise at all. And on the bench, Jacob Adams, don't know who he is. Lee Agbula, we know. O'Dwyer, Vaughan, Hinshelwood, we know. Minhas, of course. Ben Parkinson. Who are these players? Let's have a look. So Osman Foyo is now playing for Shrewsbury. In League One, joined us from Northampton the year that we went up and stayed for three years, playing, to be honest, not particularly brilliantly. Interesting career for Osman Feo there. Lucas Dunford, left winger and striker, joined us again the year that we got promoted to the National League, 
played 34 games with one goal and no assists. He's still at the club by the look of things, but with 31 goals and 15 assists out of 318 games in his career, quite surprising that he's in the best 11 of all time. Where's Joe Gale? Oh, I dread to think what's happened to this squad after I left. In fact, there is a way that we can find that out. Let's go back. This was the team of the season, the year that we got promoted. Graxic in goal, Watson, Agbula and Leslie Smith at the back with Vincent and McWilliams at wing back, Olafinjana and Beggs in midfield, Gale, Lowe, Everton and Vaughan in the front three spots. The year after that, we switched to a 4-3-3. Boyo was in, Beggs and Olafinjana in midfield, Lowe, Everton was playing on the left and Leon Davies on the right. Not known to me, so Gale left straight away but for, without a fee attached what on earth happened there the year after that another new name in defense dunford comes in and stafford prince stafford up front scored 13 goals he was on loan to us from luton the season after went to bath on loan played one game for luton before he was loaned back out to maidenhead and now he's back at luton in our second season back in the National League South, Vaughan regains his team of the year space up front. And this solid midfield of Beggs, Olafinjana and Foyo is in place again. Olafinjana with 10 goals that season. Following year, Vaughan scored 15 goals but can't quite make it into the team of the year. Jay Stevens, Joey Stevens manages to make it in. And goodness me, another influx of new people. So I think we should look back at our transfer history what happened to our team how did it break up and when so joe gale left on loan to horsham mere days after we were promoted he was one of my favorite players what on earth were we thinking we sent him on loan to horsham for a year back down to the Isthmian premier and then he left on a free to chelmsford he's now playing for port vale in league two that was a ridiculous decision by the new manager. Following year, we let Ricky Sullivan Forster go on a free to loot, and Daniel Pitchford, who had incredibly high potential, went to Dover. Looks like he never fulfilled it, though. He's back down into the Southern Premier, so that was probably the right decision there. Sullivan Forster, what's he doing these days? He's again another one who's made it into the Football League. See, I had a good eye for a player back in the day. Addy then left on loan, went to Oxford City and looks like he retired while playing for Whitehawk. Well, good to see that he stayed in Brighton. McWilliams, we loaned to Dover. But he retired as well after playing one match for Boston. And Toby Bull moved to Slough after not being able to get into our first team. They're currently in the National League South as well. But retired as a player aged 28. Hubert Graxic moved to Cheltenham, where he's still playing. Oh, what a purchase. He moved to Cheltenham and he was playing a decent number of matches in League One for a while. Fair to say that Graxic had a, a decent career after leaving GTS Culture. Now, Wharton is one of those players with incredibly high potential who didn't quite seem to make it to the next level. So he left GTS Culture after we got relegated back to the National League South, back to the National League, then is playing with Truro in the National League South. So he never really made that step up to become a Football League player, sadly. Foyo, we've already seen. He was the only player who left that year. And Gabriel Swift finally left this season to go to Bath having become a pretty solid squad player for us for a while, but again, not able to make that step up to the next level. Wow, look at this. That bank balance is quite remarkable. We're still a semi-professional team, but nearly £1 million in the bank. Oliver Roberts, still the chairman, and seems to still be pumping totally unnecessary money into the club. Still dreadful training and youth facilities, but the junior coaching and youth recruitment did improve a little bit. Please do something helpful. Use some of that money to actually invest in the, in the infrastructure of the club. And this, this team could go on to achieve great things. And potentially, you know, getting our own ground back would be nice. 
So what are our all-time records? Nathan Minhas is still the player with the most league goals for the club. Mulling still the most overall goals by a player in the season. Most league appearances now Jack Hinshelwood with 248. Youngest player, Liam Gutteridge at 16 years. Long after we departed, Jacob Ballinger's goal against Worthing is still our fastest goal. No one scored more than four in a match. Most matches won in a row, all those sequences. The good ones are mine, the bad ones aren't. Well, there we have it. The history of GTS culture after the days of Mr. Culture are sadly pretty underwhelming, but we clearly did a remarkable job because we took a team that was completely unknown playing in a park from the 11th tier of English football all the way to the National League and even after we left, they're a solid National League South team. All of that hard work that we did to build up the resources of the club, to build up the ethos, the culture, it clearly did something. This team is established. Not as high as I would have liked to see them go. I would have loved to have seen them continue that climb through the divisions. Maybe that's for me to come back and try another day. But I have other challenges in mind that will be landing on the channel in the very near future. So do keep an eye out for those. I hope you've enjoyed going on this GTS Culture adventure with me. It's been fantastic to share it with you. And if you've enjoyed it, drop a like on this video, please. Subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so that you get notified the second that FM23 content starts to drop. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you very much for watching. Be excellent to each other and I'll see you soon. <laughs>